relates to three requirements. So that means to get this 15 marks, we have to answer for three questions. Ellie was employed by Vector Limited for many years. On 30th June 2023, Ellie resigned from her employment with Vector Limited and on 1st July 2023, she started a new employment with Matrix Limited. The following information is available in respect of Ellie's employment during the tax year 2023-2024. Vector Limited. Ellie's gross annual salary from Vector Limited was 68,000 pounds. Ellie used her own car while working for Vector Limited during the tax year 2023-2024. She traveled 1,200 business miles for which she received an allowance of 40 pennies per mile from Vector Limited. Then Matrix Limited. Ellie's gross annual salary with Matrix Limited was £82,000. On 1st October 2023, Ellie was provided with a hybrid electronic company car with CO2 emission of 40 grams per kilometer and an electric range of 35 miles. The car had a list price of 37,500 pounds. All private fuel was paid for by Ellie. Matrix Limited provided a flat to Ellie to live in from 1st July 2023. The flat was purchased by the company on 1st August 2016 for 250,000 pounds and had a market value of 300,000 pounds on 1st July 2023. The company spent 15,000 pounds on improvements on 1st May 2020. The annual value of the flat is 6,500 pounds. Matrix Limited provided with an interest-free loan of 15,000 pounds on 1st July 2023. No repayments were made during the tax year 2023-2024. Matrix Limited will payroll Ellie's benefits. Other information, during the tax year, Ellie received a dividend of 1,500. Ellie made a contribution to her personal pension scheme, 4,000 pounds gross. The requirement A is calculate Ellie's income tax liability for the tax year 2023-2024. This is for 11 marks. So it's a good question, right? A rare situation where they come up with a full comprehensive question from employment income. Usually this is not a very, you know, uh, often tested topic in your exam, the employment income. It's not a oftenly tested topic but here for 11 marks we are talking about employment earlier question 10 marks we were speaking about different aspects of self-employment and employment so your mock paper focuses a little bit more towards the employment income concept you never know your exam also might be the same thing. I, I, I'm not saying exactly it would be like that, but there is a possibility. We are good? Right. So, again, in this case, we have two sources of income. Ellie's employment income and her dividend income. So, we have two different sources of income. Therefore, I follow the tabular format. One column for non-savings income, which includes employment. One column for dividend income and then a total column. Then for employment, we have different adjustments coming in for two different employers also. So I gave a separate working and I clearly indicated the working reference number W1. So I'm moving to the working. 
right so i'm starting with the computation for income that she has received from the vector limited so first one is her annual salary 82000 pounds can i take the full 82000 pounds here no i can't why because she was employed only till 30th june isn't it throughout the tax year she was not employed with vector limited and the given salary is an annual one so i cannot take the full figure i will have to time a portion april may june for three months so 68000 divided by 12 into 3 that's what i have done here 68000 divided by 12 into 3 we are good right the next one is about ellie had her own car which she has used for her official mileage as well so then which should come into the picture the mileage allowance so what have we learned about this whole mileage allowance story when it comes to mileage allowance there can be three scenarios if the amount given by the employer is equal to the amount given in the hmrc limit then no adjustment if the amount given by the uh, employer is greater than the HMRC limit, the excess will be considered as an income, a taxable income. If the amount given by the employer is less than the HMRC limit, then the gap will be considered as a, a lovable expense. So this is our treatment here. Or what should we do then? Let's see. So she has drawn only 1,500 mi 1,200 business miles and the employer has paid 40 pennies per mile. What is the HMRC limit? For the first 10,000 miles, 45 pennies per mile. So whatever employer has given is less than the HMRC limit, isn't it? So then what is going to be created here? and a lovable deduction. So how am I going to deduct it? Get the gap between 45 and 40, the HMRC limit and the amount paid by the employer, multiply by the number of business hours, business miles. 45 pennies minus 40 pennies into 1200 would be 60 pounds, which is a deduction because HMRC limit is higher than whatever the employer has provided. So that's it about the vector limited. So if I take overall from vector limited, LE has received an income of 16,940. Now let's look into the matrix limited. From matrix limited, she has received an annual salary of 82,000 pounds. Again, it's an annual salary. So what do we need to do? We have to apportion. Why? Because LE has joined Matrix Limited only on 1st of July. So she has been employed with them only for 9 months. So only the proportion applicable for 9 months we can consider here. So what I did? 82,000 divided by 12 into 9. I took that which comes to 61,500. The second one is about provision of a car to LE, which might require some calculations. So I gave a working for that. Car benefit working number three, W3. Then if you go through the question like we already went through, it's an electric hybrid car uh, and the list price is 37,500. So straight away, I took the list price. That is straightforward. After that, what do we need to do? We have to figure out the applicable rate or appropriate rate. This is again an area where students get misled. Why? If you read through the para, first thing they are referring to is the CO2 emission. If it is a petrol car or a diesel car, we will go by the CO2 emission which we have done so many calculations and we are used to that. So we will straight away take that part. 
बट इज आवर खा डीजल और पेट्रोल का नो इन दिस केस इट्स अ हाइब्रिड इलेक्ट्रिक का सो हाइब्रिड इलेक्ट्रिक का डू वी कंसिडर द सी ओ टू एमिशन फॉर टैक्स कैलकुलेशन नो वट वी यूज दैन वी यूज द इलेक्ट्रिक माइलेज बेस्ड ऑन द इलेक्ट्रिक माइलेज ओनली वी डिफाइन द अप्रोप्रिएट रेट सो इफ यू डोंट रिकॉल द रेट इट्स नथिंग टू बी वरीड अबाउट सिंपली यूज द टैक्स रेट टेबल्स सो कम टू द बिलो क्लिक यू गेट द टैक्स रेट टेबल्स click this tab then check so electric range so we are talking about a electric range of uh, 35 miles that is falling under the second category 36 to 39 miles the rate is 12% so i took that here 12% 37500 into 12% would be 4500 but can i include this full amount as a part of elis in the employment income again i cannot why because throughout the year this vehicle was not provided to her it was given to her only on 1st october 2023 that means how many months she had the vehicle october november december jan feb march only 6 months that means only half of this we can tax 4500 divided by 12 into 6 so half of that would be 2250 that is what i am going to map here 2250 and the question says the entire private fuel is managed by her that means there is no benefit there but since they specifically mentioned that i had a line and gave a zero value so better to have that safeguard whatever they mention if no adjustment is required just have a line and give a zero value we are good right the next adjustment is around uh, living accommodation so they have given her a flat again since it's a living accommodation related question we might have some workings to do so i'm giving a working working number 4 so when it comes to living accommodation basic charge straight forward higher of rent paid by the employer and the annual value so in this case it's owned by the employer himself so nothing to worry about the rent we can straight away take the annual value which is 6500 so i took that here then the additional charge or expensive accommodation what's the first step there first of all we have to check whether expensive accommodation or additional charge is applicable how do we decide that we take the original cost plus subsequent capital improvements and compare with the limit of 75000 if it is over and above 75000 only the expensive accommodation or the additional charge is applicable so in this case the cost itself is 250000 pounds so it's way above the 75000 limit so additional charge is in the picture that is fine then we have to figure out how much is the time gap between the date on which the employer has purchased the house and the date on which the house was initially given to eli so purchase has happened on 1st of may 20 uh, sorry on 1st of july 20 wait sorry 1st of august 2016 they have acquired the house house was given to eli on 1st of july 2023 so how much is the time gap let's see 17 18 19 20 21 22 in 20 by 22 august we are done with 6 years so that means this is going beyond the 6 years ban so if it goes beyond the 6 years time span what should we do we have to use the market value model so we have to take the market value 
market value as on when market value as of the date on which the house was initially given to Ellie. So as of 1st of July 2023, the market value of the flat is 300,000 pounds. So I took that here, 300,000. Then I deducted the limit of 75,000, which created an excess of 225,000 pounds. Official rate of return 2.25%. By any chance, if you forget this, don't worry, straight away move on to the tax rate table. You can find out that as well. So 225,000 into 2.25 would be 5,063 pounds. We already discussed the basic charge is going to be 6,500. So the overall assessable value for LE per an year would be 11,563. But was the flat given to LE throughout the tax year? No. It was only provided to her on 1st of July. So only for 9 months the flat was given to her. Then what should we do? We will have to time a portion. So only 9 months, 11,562 divided by 12, multiply by 9. That's what I have done. So accessible value would be only 8,600. 72. We are good? All right. Then I am mapping that to here. We are good with that. Then the last part about the employment income with metrics would be uh, the company has provided her with an interest free loan of 15,000 pounds on 1st of July 2023. No repayment has done. So what do we have to do? No repayment means you can easily go ahead with the average method. So, interest free as well. So, you can see whatever the interest that is coming from the official rate of interest will be considered as a loan benefit or a taxable benefit. So, 15,000 pounds into the official rate which is 2.25% then you can time a portion that for the time period. So it's given on 1st of July. So divided by 12 into 9. That's what I have done here. 15,000 into 2.25 divided by 12 into 9, which comes to 253 pounds. As a result, the total would be 72,675. So I have uh, 72,675 from Metrics Limited and 16,940 from Vector Limited. So the overall amount I have mapped here, 89,650. It's not a tough question. Then the dividend income, 1,500 is a dividend income. I have taken that as well. Then I got the total, which is my net income comes to 91,115, which is below 100,000 pounds. So the entire personal allowance can be claimed without a problem. So I deducted the personal allowance as well. So once that is deducted, LE is having a taxable non-savings income of 77,045 pounds and a dividend income of 1,500 pounds and a total taxable income of 78,545, which is going beyond the basic rate band. So it appears like Ellie is going to be a higher rate taxpayer. So then moving on to the income tax calculation for the non-savings income. First 37,700 will be at the basic rate, but she has done a donation, right? 4,000 pounds. Keep in mind, in the brackets, they are saying it's a gross donation. So do I need to divide it by 80 and multiply by 100? No. Gross means it is including the grossing up adjustment of 20%. So I can just add 4,000 pounds to my limit of 37,700. So my basic credit band or my extended basic credit band will become 41,700. That's what I have here. Then the balance, then the balance amount of 
35,345, I am going to take another higher rate, which is 40%. Then if I move on to my dividend income, irrespective of level of income, 1,000 pound nil rate band is applicable. So I took 1,000 pounds at 0%. Then the balance 500, I'm again taxing at the higher rate. But here, don't forget for dividend income, the tax percentage for the uh, bands are different from the non-savings income. So for dividend income, the higher rate would be not 40%, it would be 33.75%. I applied that. As a result, the income tax liability for LE would be 22,647. Are we good? Great. So this is not a tough question, right? You might have done so many questions during the class, or even in the study hub, a revision kit, all these places, you might have done similar questions, especially in illustrations. So it's not a tough one at all. This entire 11 marks, I would say bonus marks. Yeah, okay.